I hope you had a chance to look at some of the RP2350 videos that I have recently been publishing. That's the new microcontroller chip from Raspberry Pi. And in those videos, I've often referred to the Challenger Plus RP23 microcontroller board that I've been using, and I've been promising a review of that board. Well, here it is. This video is a review of the RP2350 Wi-Fi 6 BLE 5 board from Invicta Labs. And as that last part gives away, this board has networking built into it, something that the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 doesn't. There is, of course, a Raspberry Pi Pico 2 W coming, but this board has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth today. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so as I said, we're looking at this Challenger Plus RP2350 board. And the key, of course, is that we're getting a board with the new chip, the RP2350. I hope you've had a chance to see several of my videos about that chip here on this channel. But you get Wi-Fi today with that, not having to wait for uh, another board from Raspberry Pi or from whoever. Okay, so just a quick reminder, the RP2040 is the chip that powered the Raspberry Pi Pico, also powered other boards, including the Challenger RP2040 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth board. I've got a review of that here on this channel. We've now got this new chip, the RP2350. I've covered it in detail here on this channel. You've got upgrading the CPU, you've got this addition of optional RISC-V CPU cores, you've got floating point unit, you've got more PIO blocks and so on. I've covered all of this in other videos and this is at the heart of this new board that I'm reviewing. So here is the Challenger Plus RP2350 with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LE, as I said, powered by the 2350. You've got eight megs of uh, PS RAM, pseudo static RAM, eight megs of flash. There's a reset button, something that a lot of people uh, like about boards like this, you get a reset button, not something you get standard on the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. It uses the Feather format. That's a format that's been popularized by uh, Adafruit. But here's the big ticket item. You've got an ESP32C6, which acts as a Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth low energy 5 processor, adding that functionality to the board. And then just for good measure, you've also got USB-C, not micro USB. You can use that to power the board. You can program it. You can transfer data to it. You can read the serial port all through that USB-C uh, port. And also for those making uh, embedded projects, it can also use a lithium ion battery. There's a circuitry for charging and all that built into the board. You just plug it in and then you can you know, put it in a case of some kind. You can charge it up and then you can use it uh, until the battery need recharging all built into the board uh, not the battery itself but the connector and everything so you can do that from day one so the networking is provided by the esp32 c6 so it's a system on a chip that integrates wi-fi 6 at 2.4 gigahertz only there's no 5 gigahertz bluetooth low energy you've also got thread and zigbee compatibility if you need that there's 32 bit a uh, single core risk 5 processor in there it's got its own four megabytes of flash for holding the software to do with all of that. And it's built using a 40 nanometer uh, process. So the way it works is that Expressive, that's the company that make the ESP32 chips, has a thing called their AT stack. So it's a firmware solution that provides Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to other microcontrollers and there's an interface where they can talk back and forth to each other communication using what's called the AT commands. Now AT commands or attention commands are the basis of communication between all kinds of network communication devices way back when it was uh, modem. So back in the 1980s there were AT commands that you talk to modems uh, and so for example if you typed it's a serial uh, interface if you if the interface presented at plus rst that will reset the module and there of course there are much more complicated commands than that for connecting to wi-fi networks and all, and all this kind of stuff but it basically means that the microcontroller can talk to the uh the esp32 c6 via a normal serial port or via spi and then it can get that kind of network connectivity so the challenger plus board uses the second uart that's the second serial port of the 2350 to connect to the c6 as well as a couple of gpio pins that allow the 2350 to reset 
the uh, C6 or to put it into flash mode because it has to have its own software. The C6 is also connected via the second SPI channel to allow high speed data transfer between the C6 and the 2350. So there's basically two uh, channels of communication between these two chips that allow the C6 to handle the networking and then the data can be sent back to the 2350 for your program to do whatever it is that you're doing with it. And we're going to show you a demo of that uh, soon so you can get to understand some of that in action. Uh, Expressive regularly update this ESP80 firmware because it's a standard piece of firmware that comes from them. So bug fixes, security fixes, new features, and so on. And you can update that on this board. It's not, it's not fixed into any kind of ROM. It's part of the flash, and you can flash on the latest versions to get that uh, updated if there's a need to. Now, some people say, why in, uh, include the ESP32 C6? Better just to buy a ESP32 C6 microcontroller board and just use that. Why have the Raspberry Pi chip and then this. And I do understand that sentiment. There are different reasons for it. One, of course, is your choice of ecosystem. Are you used to developing software for the uh, Raspberry Pi range of microcontrollers, MicroPython, you know, CircuitPython, uh, the C, C++, we'll talk all about that in a minute. That's all there. So if you're already in that uh, environment, then you'll it will be good just to keep go doing that, but you'll have the access to the networking via this chip. Also remember that networking is compute intensive and having a separate processor is advantageous. In fact, single core devices like the C6 do struggle to do networking and also run your own custom code at the same time. We've seen that with other single core ESP uh, devices that struggled in the past to be able to do both of those things. But here's the thing to remember, also the Pico W does the same thing. It uses the Infion CYW43439 for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and it's attached via SPI to the 2040. And that chip has a Cortex M3 CPU. So some people did at the time say, I can't believe this, the Cortex M3 is inside this little chip and the Raspberry Pi Pico's got the Cortex M0 Plus. So we've had this conversation many times. We're talking about what works, what's a good solution. And this is a good solution, having a separate processor for running the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. And that's what we're getting. Okay, here's a quick uh, pin out of the uh, board. As you can see down the left hand side, what we've got reset pin, we've got some uh, voltage pins here for power. We've got all of the different GPIO pins that can be used for serial, SPI, for analog and so on. Ground. On this side, we've got the battery related circuits. You've got the USB pin here, which is connected to this pin here. You can actually power the board from here rather than from the USB uh, plug put five volts in there that works more pins down here this is the c6 with its antenna for doing your wi-fi and you've also got a couple of leds here one to show there's charging going on in the battery circuit there's the battery connector there and one is the user programmable uh, chip there uh, and so what you've got as a developer is several choices for how you want to program this board. You can use the Raspberry Pi Pico C, C++ SDK. Now I've done quite a few videos on the RP2350 here on this channel leading up to this review. And I've just been using the Raspberry Pi Pico C, C++ SDK with the Challenger Plus board. And it's worked absolutely brilliantly. No issues whatsoever. You can also use the Arduino uh, ecosystem and IDE using Earl Phil Howard's Raspberry Pi Pico Adreno core. Now, Invector Labs have worked with Earl to make sure that the Challenger Plus boards are supported uh, using the Arduino Pico. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And there is support for MicroPython and CircuitPython. I demonstrate that quite a lot in my review of the Challenger board based on the RP2040. Now, because this is all so new, this, the, this actually isn't out yet. The, the code changes have been submitted. Uh, some of it's under testing. We're talking, you know, days really before this stuff is actually available. And maybe even by the time you're watching this video, these will be available, but it is coming. And it will be very similar to the support that I demonstrated in the previous boards. So you can expect full uh, support, networking support, NeoPixel support, LED support, 
I squared C's, well, all that kind of stuff uh, in those two different uh, versions of Python there, no problem whatsoever. So let's just talk about the Arduino support because that's what I'm going to be demonstrating for you in just a minute. So Earl Philhauer created Arduino Pico back in 2021. It's a port of Arduino to the RP2040 Raspberry Pi Pico and now also to the uh, Raspberry Pi 2350. He just released that code. It's available, of course, open source. And I'm going to show you how you can use that. And it's written using the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK along with GCC and so on. And it supports over 80 boards. Of course, it supports the Raspberry Pi Pico, the Pico 2, but it supports things like the Invector Labs Challenger RP2040, which is what I've shown in my previous review, and the Challenger Plus RP2350, and as I said, up to 80 boards. So this is another way, if you're used to Arduino, if you're used to that environment, this is also a way to get into that and to support and to use these boards with Wi-Fi and everything. Now installing it, which I'll show you how to do that as a, as a demo in a minute, is really easy. You basically open up the IDE, you go to File Preferences, there's a dialog that comes up, you put in that URL, which I would also cut and paste into the description, so you've got it handy there. It's also just about everywhere you ever read about this kind of stuff. You hit OK, then you can go to the board manager and say, uh, I'd like to install the Pico, please. And you install the Pico to the Arduino IDE, just as you install any other kind of board. And that's about it. Okay, so let me show you that in action. Okay, so here I am inside of the Arduino IDE. This is in the 2 series, it's actually 2.3.2 at the time of this making this video. And here I am with a, a blank sketch connected to an Arduino Nano. So nothing to do with the RP2350. So how do we get support for uh, boards like the Challenger Plus board? Well, first of all, as I just said, you got up here to file and then to preferences. And then you're gonna get this thing here, additional board manager URLs. Just click on that here and you can cut and paste that long URL, which I was just telling you about in there. And that adds Earl's uh, support to the Arduino IDE. And now if you go up to uh, tools and then to board, you can go to board manager and you can say, well, actually I would like uh, the Pico please. And that will go ahead and search for it. And what you're looking for here is Earl's Pico uh, uh, support. So you just click on install here. That's the latest version at the time of this making this video. You click on install and that will go ahead and add that to your Arduino IDE. Okay, so once it's done that, you go to tools and then to the board. And now we want to pick a board from the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico uh, list. As I said, there's like 80 boards in here. We want to go down here and we'll find the iLab Challenger 2350 with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's now the uh, connected to this system here. And we can try one of these sample sketches. So of course, let's go to examples. Let's go to basics. Let's go to blink. This is the standard way of blinking the LED. Very, very simple code here for Arduino. And basically we want to run and install that on my Challenger board. Now, if it's the first time you're loading an Arduino sketch onto the Challenger Plus board, you will likely need to put it into boot mode so that it appears as a USB device. You do it by pressing the boot button, pressing the reset button, then letting go in the reset button and then letting go of the boot button. You need to do that once when you're using the Arduino environment with these uh, boards because after that it can upload automatically because of the sketch that's already on there. Okay, so there you go. There's the LED flashing. Now, one other thing I want to show you is how to use uh, the Wi-Fi. Now, at the moment, it uses, as you can see here, Challenger 2040 Wi-Fi. So there's a special set of Wi-Fi commands that are not the standard ones from Arduino. They're specifically here because you're using that interface to that C6 chip and it works. We'll run this now in a minute and it fetches something from the internet, connects to the Wi-Fi, fetches something from the internet and then displays it in the output there. But what I do want to tell you is that work is underway. It's almost complete. Again, we're talking just a few days, maybe a few weeks from when I'm making this video, when the native Arduino library, so the things you would use on an actual Arduino Wi-Fi enabled board will work also with the Challenger Plus board. So in fact, you can take the code from one Arduino board uh, with Wi-Fi and you can put it on here and it will work the same. So that's in the works, almost done. 
Uh, they're just testing it out now, working out the bugs. So you not only do you get the access to the uh, Challenger uh, interface, you also get the native interface. So that's really, really exciting. Anyway, okay, so you look at this code, it actually, the important thing is that it will try to connect to the Wi-Fi and then it will connect and try and get this ASCII logo dot text uh, URL and then it displays it in the uh, in the, the serial output. So let's go ahead and run that. So we're gonna use the serial monitor. As you can see, Wi-Fi chip set okay. It's connected to my SSD and then it goes and does this HTTP request. Look at there you go, Arduino. That's the last pattern that comes from that from that uh, URL. So there you go. So this board was connected to my Wi-Fi, it connected to the internet, it went and fetched something, came back and displayed it. Of course now you can do whatever you want, whatever it is that you've got in mind, whatever project you want to create, using something uses Wi-Fi, you can do it using this board. As I said, using the uh, Challenger interface that there's now or native coming very, very soon. So you could just use this just as you would use any other Wi-Fi enabled Arduino board. Okay, so where do you get hold of one of these? Well, you head over to ilabs.se and you just see there that it's one of the products they have on sale, the Challenger RP2350 Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Please note this is not a sponsored video and this is not an affiliate link. I don't get anything out of this other than the fact that I want to show you some of the great things you can do with the RP2350, not only from Raspberry Pi, but also from other vendors. In fact, I've got another board that just arrived in the post only yesterday, and that is an RP23 board from uh, Pi Maroni. So I will be looking at that also in an upcoming video. But not only that, I will also be looking at the Challenger Plus RP2350 B Connect. So this is an RP2350 board without the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so much more like a Raspberry Pi Pico 2, but it's got all the advantages of the Challenger Plus board. So you've got eight megs of PS RAM, eight megs of flash. You've got a reset button and you've got a NeoPixel, a red, green, blue LED, uses that same feather format. You've got USB-C and the battery support, but the B connect bit is because you've got this bus connect uh, connectors, uh, B connect connectors, which are these two here, which allow you to connect other things to the board without having to wire them in using the GPIO pins. You can wire them in using a flexible cable that plugs into there and it connects I squared C, serial and SPI. And here is an example of a picture of an NFC reader, which you connect via the flexible cable to the board. And I've got one of these and I've got one of these. So I'm gonna be doing a review of that, of using the B Connect and having some fun with the NFC reader uh, in an upcoming video. By the time I've cycled my way through all the other RP2350 stuff I've got to look at, I will come back to this and also show you how to do that. I'm quite looking forward to playing with the NFC reader. That should be quite fun or on a uh, Challenger Plus board. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, I invite you to stick around. Subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.